Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, the end of the This is, uh, this is the uh, uh, show that's delayed from a couple of weeks back uh, for various reasons. But uh, my name's Chris Ogle, and this is the uh, local Southwest Hearts history show. And as always, my uh, my partner in crime, uh, David Sawyer, is with me. Say hello, David. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. Crime, crime. I'm sure I could find something somewhere, but that's not the purpose of this one. <laughs> so uh, today we're talking about Rick Winsworth. Now, as you're probably aware, if you've seen these shows before, we don't have that much time, so we uh, we don't we only scratch the surface, don't we, David, of the, of the history around here. Yeah, well, I mean, if I, if we want to do the complete history of Rickman's worth, I think allow us about a month. We might might just about get down to some of the nitty gritty. But uh, this is just as you say, it's a scratching the surface, just a little sampler, a taster of what's out there in Rickman's worth. Absolutely, and uh, we got we got uh, you've been out to picking up some uh, local information. There's there's stuff that uh, I didn't even know about about Ringmansworth and and you know there's a lot of stuff I don't know about Ringmansworth, but uh, there, there's some things you've picked up that I was unaware of and. I've no doubt if you live in Rickmansworth, you'll find stuff today that you didn't know, even though you lived there. I know I've definitely um, found that out about Watford, David. You've uncovered bits and pieces that, uh, uh, that I, I didn't even know were there. I think this is one of the problems we have. We, we live in an area, but we don't really know it. I mean, one of the worst tourists in, in England are the English. A lot of people don't know what's there on their own doorstep. And yeah, it's we, not until I've gone out researching and finding these things that uh, it's surprising what's there well, we travel abroad and we go and see all these wonderful places and it's like a whole raft of it just around the corner <laughs> well that's of course why i, I do what i do in uh, the, the usa history to show an american americans their history here so it's uh, a two a two-pronged attack really it's uh, getting people out and about in their towns to find out exactly what's there and, and learn about it which otherwise it could well disappear and actually, people should be uh, considering doing these quizzes. We've got these quizzes. We're going to have to delay the first quiz that we were going to do in uh, early May. But uh, the uh, the idea of the quizzes, of course, is to kind of support this this type of show where local people start to find out a lot more about what's going on around them because the more we know about the area we live in, the more we respect it. And that's really what these shows are all about. So... Uh, so what what uh, what have we got to look forward to, David? What what have you got coming up? Well, coming up, we've got uh, lots of things in in Rickmansworth that uh, we didn't know about. Some we did, um, but looking a bit deeper into them and finding out uh, what, where, when, and why, and how, possibly. Um, and we're, as as always, we're we're open to people coming back to us and in in light, enlightening us about these things and correcting us if and when we're wrong. And I don't profess to be absolutely 100% correct, but this is just what I've gleaned in a very short while. Fabulous. All right, well, we're, we've got, uh, I reckon we could have done 20 shows just on Wickham's with alone, and there's all sorts of things down uh, down in that part. And of course, he's a very steeped in history with lots of uh, aristocracy and nobility uh, creeping out of the woodwork, as you were talking about the other day. Yeah, it, it is quite amazing that the number of people... Um, not just the nobility, but um, notable people, which we'll, we'll cover towards the end of the, the show. Uh, just a few of the people that, um, uh, if I wrote down everybody again, that would be a half hour show in itself. But uh, I've just sort of grabbed a few of the, the people that um, most people might know of. Okay, shall we uh, shall we press on with the uh, with the first slide? Well, no, right? Before we do that, before we do that, just uh, just a little thing here. Um, the history of Rickmansworth, it comes from the Saxon name Rickmer, R-Y-K-M-E-R, -E the local landowner, and Worth, meaning farm or stockade. Right. In the Doomsday Book in 1086, it was recorded as the manor of Preeshmer's Ward. And there was even a settlement here in the Stone Age. So again, lots of deep history in this place. I'm not sure whereabouts the Stone, Stone Age settlement was, but there was one, apparently. Fabulous. Well, uh, it, it's probably buried somewhere in the depths of <laughs> some uh, 
garden or other it'll be uh, really interesting if someone dug up something that was of the stone age era but uh where's tony robinson when you need him yeah time team that's yeah. the, okay thanks for that so here we go we're gonna get to sharing so um let's uh get the uh so i'll just put on maximum screen so we can see so um let me just uh make sure that uh i've got my um my white screen there that's it because that way uh i know that when you start talking it would uh it would go back to you so there we go first um first picture on the screen there right first picture on the screen this is now a miller and carter steakhouse but it was the scottsbridge mill um it's one of many mills that were in the area the batchworth mills um the croxley mill and things like that this is the only mill around or which is now a steakhouse which you can go into the steakhouse and running through the steakhouse is part of the old mill stream um, is it um is the uh, water still running or is it just a show it's still running if you look at the next slide on, on here yeah right this is the, the stream coming through the mill coming uh, as you're facing the front of the building it's coming that way and comes out and goes down the river i think it's river chess that supplies yeah. it um on the right is just the, the run through of the water but in the middle is a salmon run right now, salmon in in the river chess is right. there <laughs> well one presumes so otherwise why would they build a salmon run interesting i never even knew that i knew that I, i've obviously have seen the that's quite impressive when you go into the uh scottsbridge mirror and it's got it they've got a sort of like display area which i'm sure is what you were you were looking through there uh, that's it, right. it's quite impressive it's quite nice to see but i didn't realize that part of it was a salmon run yeah indeed it's um well, it's surprising me but uh, i've seen salmon runs up at pit lockery where you'd expect to, to see them and seeing the salmon rising up there but to actually have one here down in a, in a little old hertfordshire in, in a little local river it's a bit surprising mm. just everyone's ever caught anything there but you know this is actually in the middle of the restaurant it's um there is a glass paneling in front of it and the railing there if you actually go through there is a door which you can go through and stand right by the railings i was offered the chance but i i, I did decline and it's um has some colored lighting there to give it more effect fabulous um, you can hear the, the rush of the water going through and outside there you can see that from, from that first picture facing there is where it comes through from the mill into the chess from from the side here i guess yeah that's it just around there it's where the, the water comes out and then just uh, behind where that was is the the actual river mm. good stuff yeah. right a little bit so, further down the road rickmansworth cricket club is one of the oldest um, recorded cricket clubs in england it was founded really? in 1787 which is uh, a really long time ago for cricket that uh, building doesn't look that old david <laughs> Ah, uh, just going on to that, the present clubhouse was built in 1921. Right. And then Sir William Francis Reckitt, who was a member of the Reckitt and Coleman Mustard Dynasty. Ah, okay. So I, I think Rickmansworth is a very hot club then. Very hot club, yeah. Um, if you take one of their strong ones, I would have thought. Oh, God, good old That's nearly 100 years old now, that clubhouse. So. Well, it's coming up to a um, hundred years, isn't it? Oh, anyway. mm. oh, well. Excellent. So, whereabouts is that? Is that is that in the same ground? Yeah. If you come past the um, Scottsbridge Mill, um, and yeah. before you get to the church on the right, there's a little turning in, which goes to Rickmansworth Cricket Club, and there are other sporting facilities available around there as well. I, I know there was some the tennis courts in the Scottsbridge Mill area, but I didn't realise that you yeah. there was a whole stretch out the back of that area. Yeah, it's a, it's quite quite a big playing field. It was mm. a for a cricket cricket ground. They've got old coach and horses in Rickmansworth. Yeah, 
founded in 1787. Okay. Again, sorry, 1722. It was uh, linked to the Salter family who established a brewery in Rickmansworth and then later sold it on to the Cannon Brewery Company, which I think is yeah, now gone. Yes, I, I remember. I, I don't remember it. Obviously, that was a bit before my time. But, uh, a little. I remember us mentioning a brewery called Salter's um, uh, from a dim and distant past. But uh, when did that, the, did you know when the Salter brewery closed or passed on it um closed in around the 1924 mark i think it was and because right opposite uh, the coach is another road which tudor road and just off there is sort of close right so, so whereabouts, whereabouts is that exactly what the the coach the, the coach and horses Coach and horses, if you're coming into the one way system in Rickmansworth, come under the railway bridge and it's on your yeah. right hand side. Well, okay, so, so I, I just see to the right of the picture the um, one way arrow. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. And there's that car park. So that must be now near Nine Lives, is it? Yeah, Nine Lives is around the back of that near, near, near Salter's Close. Yeah. Uh, okay. so there's a lot of new build on, on that area, flats and the apartments and things like that. So is that the oldest pub in uh, in Ricky? Um, I have a feeling it might be because uh, when you're talking, was it 1722? There's not going to be too many older than that. The only other one I think that might contend for that might be the White Bear. <coughs> but even that, by the standards, I think is a mock building made to look like a Tudor type building. Yeah, so that's nearly 300 years old, this one. And it's got all its wisteria. Is that wisteria hanging out there? Like it, it? I'm not being a gardening person, but uh, a lot of ivy going up the chimney there on the left-hand side. And But it, it looks, from that picture, quite small, but it does go back a long way. Is it, a, is it actually a place you can stay in as well? Or? No, no, it's not, it's not a thing. I think in the past it may well have been, but it wasn't on a coaching route at all. Which is quite surprising, bearing in mind what the name is. Mm. Coach and horses are um, coaching ends. Coach and horses, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we know this building. You know this place, Basing House. Just again, a bit further along from the coach and horses on the right hand side, next to Waters Meet and the library. A very, it looks a fairly new building, really, and I think it must have been rebuilt at some time bearing in mind the past. If you look just to the right of the door, you'll see a plaque on the wall, which is, I think, one of the next slides. Yeah. Um, this refers to William Penn back in the uh, 1600s, 1600s, 1700s, um, who married Juliama, and they lived in this place for the first five years of their marriage. Mm. I mean, the stone says it all about William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania, um, planned Philadelphia, Friends of the Indians, Crusader for Civil and Religious Liberty, Diner of Peace in, in Europe. Um, quite a, a prestigious man, by all means, even though he was imprisoned twice during his lifetime, once in the Tower of London, uh, once in Newgate, for his um, religious beliefs because at the time Quakers were, or the Quaker religion was frowned upon, it was illegal, and uh, if you preached it, you were imprisoned. Hmm. And you'll notice... Quite, quite, quite good age, age. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not too bad, is it? From from that, that era, it's quite, and, and well-traveled. I mm. mean, the man spent a lot of time in America. I think he's one of the founding fathers of uh, that, but, um, he died well before they, they got their independence, which was 1766, 1776, sorry. But um, just above that, and I think it's the next slide, you'll see a little stone there, which has come all the way from Pennsylvania, from his home in Pennsylvania, which was yeah. presented to the museum. The museum inside it has a complete um, feature of William Penn and his, his history. And of course, not to forget with Basing House, it's also the home of Rivertech, where lots of small businesses can set up for very reasonable prices. Did, did you born in um, Ricky? 
No, no. Um, I think he was born up in the city of London because he was actually baptised in a church called All Hallows by the Tower, right next to the Tower of London. So he's a, a city man first and foremost. But uh, oh, so he, I spent time in the Tower. Spent time in the Tower, right next to where he was baptised. <laughs> and of course, he's buried not too far away either. He's buried in a place called Jordan's, just outside Beaconsfield, in the Quaker Meeting House there. In the grounds with his his first and second wife and some of his children and relatives and his in laws as well, I think. All all Quakers. Hmm. Very nice idea there runs the centre if you want to go there. Right. We have here, of course, Batchworth Lock, which in a couple of weeks' time is going to be a massive activity for the Rickmansworth Festival. <laughs> yeah, the festival's two weeks, isn't it? It's in a couple of weeks' time, yeah. Um the earliest references I can find suggest that uh, this was in place in 1897. Um, it, it's a great place. It, there's a, it has a, its own uh, canal centre with a lot of history of the canal there. You can also arrange boat trips up and down the canal, which is very nice. Um, and it, it's just a very pleasant, quiet place to be. You're standing on the bridge there, aren't you? I'm standing on the bridge, just overlooking it, which is quite easy. And, so. and of course, um, the the actual Ricky Festival is a bit you you carry on going down that canal, don't you? And it's on the left, is it? Is that where it is? It, it encompasses all of it. Batchworth Lock is a big part of it. Yeah, because it actually the, got, the beneficiary is the lock, isn't it? Batchworth Lock, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, on the left, you can just about see a little sign there, which is a sign for the shop selling sweets and ice creams and things like that. So you've got the shop there, you've got the canal centre, and it's just becomes a very hive of activity it's, it's a great weekend for people to go and see yeah i mean they get they get what twenty thousand people there do they or something it's massive, massive people you get a lot of a lot of um boats come up as well for the festival mm -hmm. and boats are all gaily decorated and all sort of a canal boat type thing and again you'll have boats there that are selling goods and uh, fancy goods and things like that as they go along I've definitely I've been there in the last three years, so it's always a good festival. Love it. Okay, so you need to know something about them. This is a surprise. I, I, as you didn't know about this place, it's right next to the Batchworth Lock. Um, on the right-hand side of the bridge, as I was facing the lock, there's a little sign there pointing down to the model canal, and I've never ever seen it before. And yet, so I've been here for thirty-six years. You've been here all your life, and you've never seen it before, and I've never seen anything advertised or anything like that. Um, I mean, it, it's not something that's just been put there because it's it, it's it's quite established, isn't it? By the looking of the <clears throat> stuff behind that sign. Yeah, it, it, it's um got to be there sometime. At the time of uh, photographing, there's no water in the model canal. And just to the top right there, I think, is when we looked at it earlier on in one of the other shots I've got, is um, the uh, a model of the lock itself, or a lock. Yeah, I mean, I suspect that that bit that we can see behind it is part of the lock, because it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's... Um, I'm sure Les Mead would be able to shed a bit more light on that, because Led's very Les is very involved with the, with the Batchworth lock area, and he's often down there showing people around and stuff. Yeah. Again, I, I should imagine it comes into its own again in festival time. <clears throat> yeah. Again, something that just a little sign. There's a sign there actually on it, and on the on the road next to it, which is what led me down to it, was a little brown brown sign just pointing to the 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 model little model canal. <laughs> so it says it's a UK's only working model canal system. So. So it must have been down for the winter and just getting ready for the new season. Yeah, fascinating. I'll have to go down there and see that. <clears throat> and again, just a bit further along the road, turn right by the White Bear, and you go down towards the Aquadrome, which is covers 41 hectares. It's a massive site. As you can see um, from the... Oh, sorry. The whole part of Rickmans have been part of three rivers, the chess, the... Um, Gade and the what's the other one? The Colne. 
cold that's it just the game in the cold is it's like it's just it's a it's a water world paradise isn't it, well, it is. i mean the, the the two lakes they're stock as they can batch with like they they used to be gravel pits right um it's good to see that you know that since they've excavated all the gravel they're now put to a leisure use which is fantastic i mean there's so so many things you can do there but um you know, you've got uh, sailing, canoeing, fishing, walks, nature reserve. There's a nice cafe in the park as well. So plenty of parking, and it's from what I my, my visit there it was free. So it's well worth a, a look for anybody who wants to go for a walk around the lake, or you fancy a bit of activities with canoeing or sailing, or a bit of fishing. And I think it's Stockers Lake that's actually got um, the nature reserve in. I think the next to show. Did I, Put on the next one some of the uh, bird life there, coots, swans, ducks. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a, it's an absolutely amazing part of the world, and uh, there's some just it, there's just so much <clears throat> water down there, and you got the canal, you've got the rivers, you've got the lakes. It's just a if you're into like nature and it's a bit it's a bit grim at this time of the year with all the aphids and stuff but <laughs> yeah i mean but uh, it's, it's really pleasant in the sun in the sun even on late, april morning it was quite busy the car park was uh, fairly full and lots of people around the cafe was very busy mm. and lots of parents young children going around with the older children obviously in school and it just it's just such a, a pleasant place to be Mm, that's pretty good yeah excellent okay so what's this then there's a gate a bridge, a gate a gate. at the top of uh batchworth hill near the uh the green man pub just around the corner is the entrance gateway to moore park mansion um which is quite impressive in itself the other end of it so the other end of the drive is not so good when you come up through a uh, rickmansworth golf club but uh, this one's very good. It's right on the edge of the Moore Park estate, very big private estate. Um, lots of. Uh, I mean, going with... back all those years, and I mean, I've not, I'm not, I haven't studied the, this part of, you know, the area that well. I lived in, in the other side of Watford, so this part has always been a bit, <clears throat> a bit of a distance away. Um, but the whole of that Moore Park estate was built. When was that built? In the seventies, sixties, fifties, or? Oh, I think it's got to be in the thirties, forties, or something right. like that. So before that was built, that was all part of the Moore Park Estate, presumably. Yeah, the Moore Park Estate uh, covered three hundred acres. Crikey! So again, it would have included all the Moore Park things. Um, if we go on to the the mansion itself, it's a fairly nice looking building, isn't it? <laughs> It's not bad. It was originally built in the 17th century, late 17th century, for the third Earl of Bedford. Right. Um, and it's had some work done on it since then, uh, obviously to keep it upkeep. But it was bought in the uh, early 40s, I think, by Three um, Three Rivers Council. And they leased it to Moore Park Golf Club, who have subsequently bought it from the council. So it's now wholly owned as a private uh, golf club. And what a clubhouse for a golf golf place to be, golf course. They have two courses there. And they used to have the, the Bob Hope Pro Celebrity Classic there. And it's also a, a venue for parties, for weddings and things like that. I think we, my wife and I have been there for a, a relative's wedding at one stage, wedding reception. Yeah, I remember um, going down there just last year helping... Uh deliver a wedding cake down there it was uh, it, it's very very nice inside it's amazing staircase and huge, oh, huge the, pictures again, on the walls and stuff the inside so. the, we seem to be believed it's absolutely fantastic i mean it actually opened as a golf club nearly 100 years ago 1923 so 94 years huh. amazing yeah right well, that's that's all the slides I've got. I've now I've got some things, just some other interesting bits and pieces around here. That um, Rickman's with itself, not just as for the history on that, but it's been used as a backdrop for lots of films. We're talking about um, things like well, 
films and television. We've got The Adventures of Black Beauty. It's all the Where was this room. filmed? Where was that filmed? Oh, this is all in around Rickmansworth. Oh, okay. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Where the hell do you? Where where was the where was the uh, pyramid? <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Amazing. Uh, there's a television show which you probably wouldn't have heard of, which was Ashes to Ashes. Which I heard it, I, 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 yeah. it, set in I, the sixties. Right. Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. Doesn't ring a bell with me, but the Harry. Well, I, know, I know. I know the film was. It's not that that long ago, but mm. um, <clears throat> in reality, in, in real terms. But uh, you wonder what scenes they were shooting and where they were shooting them, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we go on then to um, Harry Enfield's television program. He did a lot of sketches in his program, so that could be absolutely anywhere within it. New Tricks television show again, a detective show with old old detectives. Silent Witness with was it Helen Mirren was in Silent Witness, I think, or something like that. The Professionals, another detective. So, <laughs> Uh, lots of things like that, but again, we had numerous notable people. Um, we've we've already mentioned William Penn, obviously been been there, and his name's given to lots of things within the Three Rivers district. The, the William Penn Leisure Centre used to have William Penn School, um, Penn Way, and things like Penn Place. Lots of things after him, but also there, David Urquhart, an MP, comes from Rickmansworth. I suppose we should have some from Rickmansworth representing us. George Eliot, pen name of Mary Ann Evans. That's a surprise. And one for the one for those of my age, Val Dunican. <laughs> Val, he was from there, was he? <laughs> yeah. George Orwell. Huh? 1984. Uh, Cardinal Wolsey. Very prominent name at the. He, the he he uh, he was born in Rickmansworth, or. <laughs> He, again, it was part of the uh, Diocese of uh, St Albans. So he would have been incorporated with that and he, he sort of lived at the Manor of Moore. I think it was in Rickmansworth, which is a uh, sort of bishopric or whatever cardinal place is called, C or something like that. And as we mentioned earlier on, the, the, the nobility, the second and third earls of Bedford, the first Earl of Monmouth and the third Earl of Pembroke, to name but a few. And the list of those goes on and on. It's a place for the nobility. So we are honoured to be living in this area. Or not. The nobility was everywhere because there was like landowners all across the country. So I guess no matter where you live, there was always going to be some nobility hanging around somewhere. <laughs> but uh, um, We've got here the Earls of Bedford, the Earl of Monmouth, Earl of Pembroke. Where's the Earl of Watford? And, and the Duke, yeah. Duke of Rickmansworth. Well, it was the old Castlebury, you know, wasn't it? And I mean, that was Essex, wasn't it? The Earl of Essex. And of course, in the town centre in Watford, you've got Monmouth House, which was, again, an Earl of Monmouth. But again, it doesn't seem to be any sort of Earl of Hartford. Hartford I, suppose. Well, I, guess, I guess all these people, like Monmouth, Essex, all hanging around having bits of Watford, maybe the Earl of Watford had bits of Essex and bit of <laughs> <laughs> well, quick pro oh, quo type yeah. of idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I've got for you on this, unless you've got any um, curveballs to throw me this week, Chris. No, I haven't got any curveballs. I've been a bit derelict in my duties, but uh, I, I think that it would be really good to do. The, the, there's things like the. Um, um, uh, What's the name of that place? It's a very old barn. Is it, is it Croxley Barn or something? There's some old... There's Croxley Barn and Windmill. Uh, uh, yeah, there's there some old... <clears throat> What we need to do is put a shout out to somebody from this show and say, who knows people that can let us go down there and take some pictures and, do, and give us a bit of the story so we can include that on a show? Because I'm sure that there are people out there that could do that. I'm sure there are. It would, be, it would be great to get some feedback uh, from people that um, no, say Les Mead, was it the one name you mentioned? 
Yeah, um, yeah. And I tell you that where we ought to go and hang out, and I'm going to try and get down there and <clears throat> meet the some people down there. But of course, the South Oxy Estate area used to be owned by was it Cross and Blackwell family? All right. Well, perhaps we can. Um, I can wander around, around South Oxy and see what I can find. There's a there's a church down there that I think Ascend now own. I'm going to go and see Ascend, and uh, it used to be the church that belonged to the Cross and Blackwell family. It was actually their church in their grounds. <laughs> um, but I don't believe you can just go in. I think you've got to go in with somebody who's got the key. And I, but I believe that Ascend have got uh, who who now own it. Well, I'll, I'll have a look into the history of um, South Oxy and Carpenters Park, yeah, um, the joint areas, and see see what I can find. I, I, it's unlike Watford and Rickmansworth and surrounds. It doesn't appear to be anything, any buildings that are particularly old or like in history. But there's, there's got to be a history to the place at any rate somewhere well, along there, the line. There are definitely some interesting things because Eric, um, what's his name, Eric. Um, I know the man you mean. Yeah, Eric used to be the mayor. Three rooms. Eric Bishop, is it? Is it Eric Bishop? Anyway, he, he was Bishop, telling yeah. very interesting stories about uh, um, stagecoaches and, and uh, taxis and symbols that are still on the road that you can go and take pictures of that, that are still there for tax collection purposes, coal tax and stuff like this. So some really interesting old history there, not buildings so much, but landmarks of the bygone era. You know. Yeah, again, could, could well make a, a good show. I'll, I'll put my mind to it and see what I can find out. Fabulous. All right, David, thank you ever so much for getting out there and uh, doing some discovery work for us, uh, as always. And um, I'm looking forward to the, the next show already. And uh, you know, let's uh, let's uh, keep this going. And if anybody wants to come up with some bits and pieces for us to cover on the show, or even come on the show, that'd be fantastic. Just that'd be great. Know, um, and we'll be delighted to to be steered and guided uh, in in a direction that someone's interested in. So, thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. Good to have you. Good to see you again. And. Uh, See you all in a, a couple of weeks or so. But in fact, a couple of weeks, I won't be here. So we may have to pull it forward a week or push it back a week or whatever. But the weeks have got out of sync anyway, haven't they? They have, yeah. I don't, I don't, because of the Easter break and, uh, say, the problems that uh, we've experienced uh, personally at the moment. So, again, whenever we can get it up and running. We no problem. All right. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.